So fight or flight, rest and digest. Your body decides to do each of these based on environmental stimuli. Um, historically, like in terms of evolution, our bodies did fight or flight when there was a stressor um, that required us to have a acute stress reaction. Um, and we'll talk more about this reaction more specifically in terms of the physiology. For example, if there's something chasing you, a bear, a mountain lion, right? This, this response is still advantageous for us if we're in a acutely stressful situation. However, we also have the same response to stressors that are not quite so like critically um, demanding. So school, social stress, all this stuff that our brains interpret as stressors because they are, and then our physiology is the same in terms of um, the effects. So increased heart rate, um, increased variable responses, I'll talk more about. But this can lead to, if this happens chronically, it's not very healthy for you. So this is where it becomes a problem in our modern society. I also want, there's a place we can talk about um, how, so how your brain decides if something's a stressor. A little bit about that. Complicated, right? Um, you have visual information coming in, sounds, you may see, smell. We don't smell a whole lot of things, um, especially things that induce fear. You may hear a sound that is, the information is eventually sent to, sent to your cortex. Your cortex sends information to the limbic system, ultimately to the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is going to be our integrator in the autonomic nervous system. It can then tell either the parasympathetic division or the sympathetic division to do their things. Receiving information, deciding motor information out. So this next diagram has some new information and some of this should be review. So going down here, what nervous, what division do you think this is right here? This is our parasympathetic. There would also be potentially a motor neuron in the sacral region as well, as part of the parasympathetic nervous system. This is our sympathetic nervous system. And I can tell by the anatomy. This, this is showing up here, the cerebral cortex and amygdala ultimately send information to the hypothalamus. There are nuclei, collections of cell bodies in the hypothalamus that process the information they're getting and then decide what to do. They are gonna have motor neurons that project down to either the cranium here for the parasympathetic nervous system or the lateral horn of the spinal cord. Then we've got some other things you could label here, right, as review, our pre-ganglionic neuron and our post-ganglionic neuron, of course, our ganglia in the middle, which would have more than one cell body in them in reality. Okay, I'm um, so gonna skip all that. I already labeled all that. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is dive into more detail comparing the two divisions of the autonomic nervous system. You can see I already have somatic motor labeled here. So this would be skeletal muscle. What's this one up here? This is our parasympathetic. And this down here is our sympathetic. Again, you can tell that based on the anatomy of where that ganglia is. The parasympathetic nervous system is located 
both in the cranium and in the sacral region. I don't have that there yet, but I could add the second location, right? Ignore that one for now. It would be like this. It doesn't matter which heart pictures I use, right? Because it's the same heart. You actually only have one heart, believe it or not. So the PNS, sometimes you'll see this referred to as the craniosacral. because of the locations of those cell bodies. The sympathetic nervous system is sometimes called the thoracolumbar because it extends from the thoracic region down to the lumbar region. else do I want to tell you here? I want to tell you what neurotransmitters are released from these different neurons. So you already know the neurotransmitter released from your somatic motor neurons. What neurotransmitter is this? Acetylcholine, yeah. Well, it turns out we're going to use acetylcholine again. It's a very useful, useful neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine is always the pre released from the preganglionic neuron. So every single place where I have a preganglionic neuron, it's going to be ACH. It's also released from the parasympathetic postganglionic neuron. So both of these here. Now we'll talk about this. It's not gonna be the same receptor it binds to. We'll get back to that. Just want you to keep that in your mind. It's not gonna be this simple, but right now I just wanna do neurotransmitters. The other neurotransmitter that you need to know about is going to be norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is released from the sympathetic nervous system. So like right here. Lastly, we're going to add one more piece of complexity in here, which is that other green neuron I have drawn there. This is part of the sympathetic nervous system, but there's another exception. So I'm going to have some another organ pop up here with another projection. And then I'm going to draw, that's the kidney, on top of the kidney, is, anyone know what organ this is? It's actually an endocrine gland, the adrenal gland. So this is pretty cool. Um, the adrenal gland, so this is our preganglionic neuron here. So what neurotransmitter is going to be released from that preganglionic neuron? It's gotta be ACH guys. So ACH, be released onto that preganglionic neuron and cause the adrenal gland to release a chemical messenger into the bloodstream. That's then called a hormone, right? Because it's in the bloodstream. This is going to be epinephrine, very closely related to epinephrine to norepinephrine. So this effect right here and this effect on the entire body have similar effects um, in terms of what they do. They're gonna increase heart rate. This one is traveling through the bloodstream. This one is synapsing directly onto target organs. We're gonna look at this more closely. A couple of pictures I wanna show you that show the same thing I just did. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of them in detail. These are really nice pictures for understanding this stuff. I love this picture. It shows the anatomy. Um, this would be in the central nervous system. 
your peripheral nervous system, what neurotransmitters released onto what organs and the effects of those. I love this picture. Here is one from your book, similar idea to that previous one. Um, it shows the anatomy of the spinal cord, which I kind of like. Lastly, got this one. This is a figure that shows those regions. So the sympathetic being thoracolumbar and the parasympathetic being craniosacral. And this shows the length of the pre and post ganglionic neurons in these two divisions. We will look at some of these organs later. The one I want, most of them are the same, right? So most of these organs are innervated by both divisions, dual innervation. We'll go back to these effects, but there's a couple that are over here that aren't over here. Just want you to note that for now. Of course, one is the adrenal gland. That's that one that does not have a pre-gang, um, a ganglion. It just goes all the way to the adrenal gland.